Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorr, and the four subtypes have long been the trademark that I wanted to add to the Myers Briggs systems. Uh, if the old traditional models were focused on categorizing 16 common behavioral patterns in society, 16 uh, known uh, different ways of being, then uh, the subtypes were meant to be outside of your normal behavior. They were reflections of what a person looks like when they aren't being healthy. The subtypes were meant to show that, well, most of us are not always in that ideal state. Not all of us are using our flow state at its fullest, and that's what it is. The personality type is a flow state. It's how you get energy, how you get motivation, how you get uh, power. That's also in the sense that when you're not using your four letters, your four dominant preferences, then you are starting to respond to other needs. You're starting to have visible effects on your energy, your motivation, and your interest and passion. You'll find that uh, you are starting to run out of steam, but you'll also find that you're getting things that you don't get in a flow. So the subtypes theories dive into what differences happen, what happens, what letters change, how do the letters change. And I believe that, that there are introverts that are, in a sense, more extroverted than what is considered healthy for this type. And that these introverts will, in average, show a more effective, a more critical, a more negative way of engaging in the world around them. I also believe that intuitives in sensing will seem more overwhelmed and more overstimulated and less receptive to information than a sensor would be in this situation. I would say that a feeler in thinking would appear less motivated and less... Uh, they would find that what they do isn't valuable, that it's, it's not important unless anyone else uh, rewards them or compliments them for it. And finally, the judging type in perceiving will feel a loss of control as if uh, the world is starting to spin beyond what they are able to control and manage and that they are entering a mode where they feel purely reactive and not able to uh, deal with it. This subtypes theory goes beyond what people traditionally say. People tend to say that type is just a matter of uh, variation. If you're 60% introverted, then you're an introvert. If you're 40% extroverted, then you're an introvert. <laughs> if you're 40% uh, introverted, then you're an extrovert. Uh, it's, uh, the theory has always been that uh, introverts can be extroverts, just like extroverts can be, but without any effects on its energy, without any effects on its mood or motivation or its health. But I'd like to fix that. I, I'd like to fix that by showing that, yes, an introvert can extrovert and an extrovert can introvert, but with the uh, effects and impacts on people's health and motivation. So what you'll want to do is you will want to track down different modes that you can enter through. And I will talk about four key modes that I think we will all be able to recognize. The first, of course, is the hero, the flow, the normal person in a normal state where they feel, they feel energetic, they feel interested in what they do, they feel motivated and they feel like what they are doing is valuable and important. And they feel like they can manage stress and that they are able to stay on top of things and that they have, they have their life under control. This is uh, I the ideal state for any person to be in. Uh, the, the, the subtypes are reflections of less ideal states. The sidekick is a reflection of a person who has energy, who has a sense of calm, but in a way, what they are doing is, it feels unimportant to them. And it feels like the world is a little too stressful or a little beyond what they are able to control and manage. So, when you look at the sidekick, you, lo you look at somebody who is in a learning state. A person who uh, is in their dominant introverted or extroverted function, who is able to explore the needs of these functions, uh, is able to learn from their mistakes, they're able to change their mind when given new information. A per an, an intuitive who is able to use their intuitive function is going to be more responsive to new information, more open to take in 
uh, information overall to not feel overwhelmed by information. And this is what the sidekick state is. The sidekick state is the student state or the child state or this, uh, the state of a worker, somebody who is uh, learning, who is adjusting to standards, who is taking in new information, uh, who is responding to things that's happening, who changes their mind when things, uh, when things, um, when their old views are proven to be wrong. The psychic, however, has a lower than average sense of motivation. They are out of touch with their feeling function if they are feelers or with their thinking function if they are thinkers. And so what they're doing, they will do thinking as the feelers will do thinking, but they will find it completely demotivating. They'll feel like what they do is unimportant. And so the only way you can do, do this, the only way you can keep on with this is if you get uh, some form of reward for it, money, uh, title, status, recognition, a pat on the head. Often uh, a lot of us are in this so-called sidekick or work state because we are focused on work, we're focused on doing what um, work finds important but we don't do what we find important and everyone needs to do this at this certain times and everyone needs to be able to do this. Beyond this um, it's the it's the sense that things are a little beyond our control. Often, when things are coming from outside, it's uh, for the judger at least the, sen the case that um, you f you f you'll feel a sense that there's too much going on beyond what you are able to do. There is always more to do. There is always more things happening. There's a steady stream of content, and this is often in the workplace. You constantly have new customers to manage, new uh, work to deal with, new t things to file. There's always something that demands your attention, keeping you in this sidekick state, but also putting stress on you uh, because there is little room to breathe or to manage or to prioritize. Beyond the sidekick state, there is the mentor state. And this is the opposite of the sidekick state. You can say that you are balancing the sidekick and the mentor within you as two archetypes. That uh, The sidekick, of course, being the childish version of you, the one that has, wants to have fun to learn, uh, the one who wants to prove themselves to their boss or to their teacher, the one that uh, is trying to learn and to uh, get work done and to stay on top of things, but who has often low sense of control and low sense of responsibility in the field of uh, work that they are doing. But the mentor represents instead high responsibility, a high stand, a sense of uh, what is right, a high sense of what is the good thing to do, a strong sense of what's important, a strong sense of perspective on this is the thing that needs to be done. But no learning mindset. The mentor is a person that isn't trying to learn. They are not trying to take in new information. They're, they don't readily change their views if they are questioned. Often they hold on to old mindsets. They keep on to old beliefs. And they are more interested in teaching other people these beliefs and getting these beliefs spread than in questioning themselves, uh, thinking about things, and uh, going uh, beyond and seeing deeper what is behind what they are thinking. You could say that the mentor is, in one way, uh, reversed in their introversion and in their intuition or sensing letters. Uh, the intuitive introvert, the IN type, uh, resembling more an ES type, the ES type resembling more an IN type. Uh, if you reverse the, sec the first and the second letter, you get the mentor. Uh, you get to see what your type is like in the mentor state. And uh, the mentor. Uh, what happens when the introversion that there is reversed is uh, first you begin to become more critical of what's happening around you. You start focusing, and this is also a key mentor quality, focusing on what other people are doing wrong, noticing errors and mistakes, telling people, hey, that's not right, that's not how you do it. And when your intuition or sensing function is uh, unflipped or unbalanced, that's also when you start feeling like there is too much going on, you stop listening, you start tuning out, you start ignoring things. Uh, other people might tell you things, but you go, there's nothing there. Just like uh, in uh, movies when the kids say, look, uh, the adult says, I don't care about that. In a sense, uh, uh, we can all switch between both of these states. And uh, the balance of these two is the hero state, it's flow. 
Uh, it's when we feel unbalanced, for example, when we feel a duty or responsibility towards others as mentors, or when we feel like we are, uh, we need to prove ourselves to somebody or to a teacher or to a boss, and that we need to learn and improve ourselves so that we can reach higher. That's when we're in the sidekick. And it's when you experience total unbalance that you fall into the rival state. The rival state representing your anxious, your stressed self. In many ways, uh, the critical nature of the men mentor represents an anxious state in people. People who are experiencing anxiety, people who are experiencing worry, uh, are often in more, more inclined towards the mentor state. While people who are more towards the uh, experience of stress and the a loss of control are more likely to be in the sidekick state. But a person who experiences both of these things is a person in the rival state. A person who is experiencing both the sense of lack of, of control and the sense of anxiety and stress, that is a rival. A person who is in a defensive state, they are focused, uh, everything around them is perceived in a negative way. They are less receptive to new information. They ignore things that are happening that go against their existing beliefs. And they feel like what they do is unimportant and that nobody cares and that it doesn't matter, and they feel that uh, it's beyond stressful, that there is too much going on, more than what they want. That's what happens when all your four letters flip. That's when INFJs start to resemble ESTPs. That's when ENFPs start to resemble ISTJs. The core theory of the subtypes is that you can be an you can act like a perceiver as a judging type. You can be in a perceiving environment as a judging type and you'll experience that this leads to loss of control. Just as when a perceiver goes into judging, they will experience that that leads to a loss of control. So, thinking about this, what subtype are you in? What do you relate to the most? Do you relate to being in a position right now where you need a high amount of responsibility over others? Or do you relate to being in a state where you uh, are more carefree about where you seek to, in a way, prove yourself to somebody or where you try to work hard towards something, uh, a project, a school, learning something new, improving yourself? That's uh, a good cue to finding out what type type you're in and also finding out what type you're in. Like I said, the hero state when you're, is when you're in touch with your first four letters. The sidekick state is when you're in touch with, uh, in particular, your first two letters. Uh, sorry, <laughs> mirrored cameras. And when in the mentor state, uh, you're in touch with the other two, uh, but not the first two. So this is the algorithm. In the rival state, you're not in touch with any of your functions. So that uh, often is a chaotic... Uh, state, a uh, crisis state, a negative state. So that's um, something worth avoiding. <laughs> so I hope that made it a little clear and I hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, if you're interested I can offer type consultations and I can offer uh, services where I can type you and help you pinpoint what subtype you're in. Uh, if you do follow the link down below and I hope to see you guys in the next video.